I'll address this objective, demonstrate a range of valid and invalid syllogisms using Venn diagrams. So let's first go over these terms so we're all familiar with their meaning as they're used in logic. So a syllogism is a deductive argument having two premises or two given propositions and a conclusion. A valid syllogism is a deductive argument where the conclusion follows from the premises. And note, we're not talking about whether the propositions or conclusions are true, only that the conclusion follows from the premises. That's the meaning of valid. And an invalid syllogism is a deductive argument where the conclusion does not follow from the premises. And again, we're not talking about whether the propositions or conclusions are true, only that whether the conclusion follows from the premises. Um, and that's an important distinction in uh, logic that valid and invalid is just whether the conclusion follows from the premises or not. And before we get into demonstrating valid and invalid syllogisms, I wanna go over how to represent different statements with Venn diagrams. There are only a few you need to know listed here. And uh, with these, you can test the validity of basically any syllogism. So here's how we can represent all A are B. And what we've done is we have eliminated everything in A that doesn't intersect or overlap with B. And here's how we represent no A are B by eliminating the intersection of A and B. And here's how we represent some A or B by putting an X in the intersection of A and B. And here's how we represent some A or not B by putting an X in A outside of the intersection with B. So with the syllogism, we'll have a third circle to deal with. So let's look at some syllogisms with Venn diagrams now. So here's an example of a syllogism. All birds are animals. All pelicans are birds. All pelicans are animals. So let's demonstrate this syllogism using a Venn diagram. The B circle will be birds, the A circle will be animals, and the P circle will be pelicans. But it's important that you think more in terms of validity and how the syllogism holds together. So you don't get tripped up by the meaning. For this reason, I'll try to refer to the circles by the letters more than by what is represented by the letters. Okay, so here's what this syllogism looks like. Here's how we show the first premise, all birds are animals or all BRA. We show this by crossing out anything in the bird circle, in the B circle that isn't part of the intersection of the A circle. In other words, we're eliminating from consideration any part of B that isn't also part of A. And here's how we demonstrate the second premise. All pelicans are birds, or all P are B. We'll cross out everything in the pelican circle that doesn't intersect with birds. Again, we're eliminating any part of circle P that does not include circle B. And notice that since we already eliminated part of the intersection of B and P with the previous premise, we don't change that. That's already been eliminated. We don't, so we don't need to erase these two lines, even though they are in the intersection of P and B, because that section of the intersection was eliminated by the previous premise. And the conclusion is all pelicans are animals or all P are A. We don't draw anything new for the conclusion. We just want to see if the conclusion is captured once we have drawn the, once we've represented the premises. And we can see that there is nothing in the P circle that does not intersect with the A circle or nothing in P that doesn't intersect or an overlap with A. We could ask ourselves, is everything in the P circle right now also in the A circle? That is right now after we've represented the premises because that is the condition that must be met for this syllogism to be valid. And that condition is met. So this syllogism is valid. The conclusion follows from the premises. 
Okay, here's another one. Some mammals are carnivores, all mammals are animals, therefore some animals are carnivores. Let's examine this with the Venn diagram. So here we're showing some mammals are carnivores by putting an X where mammals and carnivores intersect. And we're putting the X on the line here because we're not sure whether the X should go in the intersection of M and C only, or if it should go in the intersection of M, C, and A. Or if it should go, um, <clears throat> so we don't know where the X should go. So we have to account for all the possibilities. The premise tells us that the X goes somewhere in the intersection but we don't know where. Okay, here we're showing all mammals are animals by crossing out everything in M that doesn't intersect with A. This is why it's important that we had accounted for the possibility that the X could have been anywhere in the intersection of M and C. With this premise, all M are A, we're eliminating the possibility that the X is at the intersection of only M and C. And if we had only placed the X there and not accounted for the possibility that the X could be at the intersection of all three, we would have reached a wrong logical conclusion. Uh, and also when you're in logic, typically you'll do um, kind of the sequence is if there's any universal statement like all M or A, you would usually represent that first. So then we, so, um, so then that other possible X placement would be eliminated or it wouldn't ever be an option. Um, but you can also get there this way though it's uh, less conventional to uh, do the X's before you do the universal claims. Um, so again, if we had only placed the X here in the intersection of M and C, and not recognize that it could have been here at the intersection of all three, we would have reached a wrong logical conclusion. But now we can be certain that the X is at the intersection of M, C, and A because we've eliminated the other part of the intersection. Okay. And here we can see that the conclusion that some animals are carnivores is valid because there is an X at an intersection of A and C. Again, we didn't add anything for the conclusion. There's no new drawing here for the conclusion. We just check for the conclusion by looking to see if the conclusion is represented or captured once we've represented the premises. What we're looking for is an X somewhere in the intersection of A and C, and indeed, we see that. But now let's change it so the conclusion is no animals are carnivores and see if it follows. And we can see that this conclusion does not follow, making it an invalid argument or an invalid syllogism. And here we can see this X that shows that there are some A that are C. And we can also see that there is another area where C and A intersect by that uh, arrow to the right. What we would expect to see to arrive at this conclusion is that the intersection of A and C would be eliminated. So for this syllogism to be valid, we would expect that the two areas where the arrows are pointing to be crossed out or eliminated. Like this, this is what we would expect to see if, the, if it was a valid syllogism. Now we don't care what else is going on in the diagram, but in order for this conclusion to follow from the premises, after we've represented the premises, this intersection must be eliminated as, it's, as is represented here. And if we change the conclusion to this other syllogism to read all animals are pelicans, we can see that this does not follow. So it is invalid. The arrow or the arrows are pointing to the circle of A that does not intersect with P. From this Venn diagram, we can conclude that all P are A, because everything that is available for P is also an A, but we cannot conclude that all A are P because there's, as these arrows show, there's a lot of A that's, that does not intersect with P. 
Uh, let's look at a couple more so you can see how to represent different types of premises with Venn diagrams. Let's look at this one. Some mammals are not carnivores. Some carnivores are animals. Therefore, all carnivores are mammals. We can represent some mammals are not carnivores by putting an X outside of the intersection of M and C. We don't know if the X should go only in the M circle or if it should go in the intersection of M and A, so we'll put it on the line between. And we know that some M are C, but we don't know if that is only in the M circle or at the intersection of M and A. Some carnivores are animals. We can show this by putting an X at the intersection of C and A. Again, we put it on the line because we don't know if the X would go at the intersection of C and A only, or if it would go, or if it could go in the intersection of all three, M, C, and A. So now let's see if this conclusion follows. The conclusion all carnivores are mammals or all CRM does not follow because we can see that there is a possibility of an X outside of the intersection of M and C. That's the uh, X on the left. And in fact, um, it's clear that one on the left is clearly outside of the intersection of M and C. And for the X just to the right of that, there's a possibility that it is outside the intersection of C and M. Um, for example, it could be at the intersection of C and A only. And what's more, there's more to the circle of C that does not intersect with M. So that's the top right arrow that's represented by the top right arrow. So this argument is invalid. So what we would want to see for this conclusion to be valid, all carnivores are mammals, would be to have everything in the C eliminated except for the intersection of M. And we do not see that. OK, let's look at another syllogism to show some other ways to represent claims with Venn diagrams. Here's the sample. So here's how we show no mammals are birds or no M are B with a Venn diagram. We cross out the intersection of M and B. Here's how we add the premise no B are F by crossing out or eliminating the intersection between B and F. And the conclusion no M are F does not follow from the premises because we can see that there is an intersection of M and F that is open. Now, the important feature of Venn diagrams is the logical structure. It may be true that no mammals are fish, but what we're looking at in this case is whether that conclusion follows from the previous propositions, and it does not. So it is not a valid syllogism. So we've demonstrated a range of valid and invalid syllogisms using Venn diagrams, and I would invite and encourage you to um, play around with Venn diagrams, uh, represent different syllogisms and kind of get a feel for how they, how you can represent different syllogisms and test for validity. All right, thanks.